Yo guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be the five things I don't like about the Fiesta ST. Now, in again, in no particular order, we're going to start off with the miles per gallon. Now, being a two litre, you're obviously expected to be quite thirsty on fuel. Now, I never thought it'd be quite as thirsty as it is. Now, I get on average about 28, which you, you think isn't too bad. But the Audi, I was always moaning about the Audi being bad on the fuel, and that was a 1.8 turbo. And that always used to get on average about 35, 36. Obviously, when you put your foot down, it'd go to about 15. But it was always like quite a moaning point for me. Uh, because obviously, people with like not loads of money and want to drive a, quite a fast car. It was a little bit of a downer on the experience now every time I put my foot down. Like, put my foot down now. Wow. I always forget how quick this clock is. Like, how nippy it is. You can almost see the fuel gauge dropping as you put your foot down. Now, it's obviously it's not such a big problem all the time if you're a normal, if you're just driving normally around. But if you're driving, I'd say a little bit here and there, a bit of your foot down, a bit of not your foot down, uh, it does wear your fuel down a little bit quicker than you'd think. The clock! Backlight! Now, by the clock's backlight, I mean the green backlight on the back of the clocks and the back of the radio and all that. Now, obviously this is a video of things I don't like. I actually hate this one. Now, why they went with green and red, I actually don't know. Like, my dad's Golf is blue and red, and that's a perfect colour combination. In my Audi, it was white and red, and that was a perfect colour combination. Now, green and red does not go. It looks shit. Now, why they actually thought that was a good idea, I highly don't know. And I doubt they were actually thinking about it at the time. Now, I actually like the design of the clocks, but if any of you know how to get the backlight to not be green anymore and be blue or white, then please put it in the comments below because I absolutely despise that. The brakes! The brakes aren't the best. Now, if you're gunning it a bit and you step on the brakes, they seem to have a bit of brake fade. Now what I mean is, the initial brakes, and then they seem to just fade out, like they just carry on going. And the car isn't slowing down anymore. Now if you, I'm sure if you proper stamp on the car, then the ABS will kick in, but until you actually properly stamp on the brakes, it doesn't slow you down that much. Now, Everyone that modifies these kind of cars put the either Mondeo ST brakes on or the ST170 brakes and I will look into that at some point if I do. When I do supercharge it, the first thing I'll do is the brakes. Um, no point having big power if you can't slow the car down and you're going to crash into a wall at like 150 mile an hour. It's just no point. Now, at normal speeds, like I'll show you now with no one behind, they will slow you down quite quick. It's just when you're going a bit faster, say like 60 or 70, and you have to, say, make an emergency stop, you are going to have to stamp on the brakes to get it to stop. Now, it's a little bit of a problem, obviously, because uh, the safety aspect in it. Um, also, with it only having two bloody airbags, it's not the, uh, the safest car to drive anyway in the result of a accident. But trying to avoid an accident is made even harder by the shit brakes. Now, it's four discs all the way around, so it's as good as you're gonna get with these brake, uh, brakes. And I had quite new brake pads when I first had the car. Um, so it's nothing to do with not having any meat on the, on the pads because I do check them every day. So it's nothing to do with that. So yeah, the brakes. The steering wheel. 
Now the steering wheel is very of its time. Um, obviously it's got the ST embossed logo at the bottom and I really like that bit. But I don't like these blocky, this blocky design of the steering wheel. Now other people might disagree and say that oh, I'm just being really picky or something. But I actually don't like the feel of it. And I kind of want a smaller uh, steering wheel but I'm probably going to fit a sporty one to at some point when I do track the car or rally car um, replicate it when I do that so when I do convert into that it will look a bit more like a, uh, a rally car style interior obviously the, the gear knob will be changed as well at the same time but yeah the, the steering wheel there's no there's no functions on the steering wheel so it's nothing like the Audi it's just very basic uh, very plasticky looking. It's, just, it's rubber, but it's obviously hard plastic behind. It's just it doesn't it doesn't scream quality sports car kind of thing. Um, the overall feel of the steering wheel and the actual steering feels good. It's just it just looks so bleak just sat there with its blocky thing with a massive airbag on it. That's the only friggin' airbag in the car basically without the airbag and the passenger side it just doesn't scream sporty car it just doesn't and the last thing i'm going to be talking about guys is one you probably will have guessed is the shoddy design of the seat openers and pull catches now i don't know what ford were thinking they still haven't rectified the problem because in the new sts and the uh, mark 7 STs and such they still haven't rectified the problem now this stupid catch on the side of the of the um, seats either the catch breaks or the cable snaps now I don't know what Ford were thinking by doing this stupid design because I gave it back to Ford and said fix this so they fixed it and the next day it bloody broke again now I don't know why they don't you know, upgrade the cable and make it a tougher cable or a tougher catch. It's just a bloody stupid design. Like the whole other bits of the seat are really good. But the frigging catch breaks all the time. So what's the point in having a three door car that you can, you know, retract the seats back or like forwards with a catch that frigging breaks all the time. So you can't actually get anyone in the back anyway. So what's the point in having the back seats? Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed. Please like the video, it does help a lot. I appreciate it. Please comment down below what you thought of the video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!